Hi, this is Des from the Music Marketing Academy and in this video I'm going to show you how musicians sell their merchandise. The great thing is, and it's a nice little bonus, I'm interviewing a guy called Luke Henry from a band called City Lights. So if you come to market either you or your band, you've come to the right place. Let's get on with the interview. So Luke, I've been um, a major fan of you guys for quite a while now. Obviously your, your you. band is called um, City Lights. Um, yeah. Without further ado, mate, just introduce yourself and uh, yeah, tell us a little bit about the band, if you don't mind. Yeah, so I mean, we've told the story quite a few times there, so I'll cut it short. But we've been going for the best part of 10 years. So me, me and Ad, the lead guitarist in the band, we've been best mates since we've been 14 years old in school. Um, we both got guitars together at Christmas. Our mums have bought some guitars. I didn't know he had one. He didn't know I had one. Uh, we come into school back in Brilliant. January. Got back. He's, he's got a guitar. I've got a guitar. The first thing we said was, let's start a band. We couldn't even play the things. We didn't even know how to play a single chord. We'd had no lessons. Let's start a band. And we've been playing together since then. We've been in, we've had tons of bands where we've had different drummers. And he was the singer. He started out as the singer. Um, he was almost a singer for City Lights, and I was like the lead guitarist. And then all of a sudden, we sort of just swapped around. Um, so yeah, we've been friends since we've been fourteen years old. Sure. I met the a bit later on in college. Uh, we both were doing music technology. I was a little bit of a, I was a troublemaker. I was in college, <laughs> not not in the naughty sense. Just like I could never just sit down and concert. I always wanted to just go and get in the studio and do my own thing and sure, do sure. all these lectures and talking. It was all too much. Sure. But yeah, we never we didn't we we got on as friends in college, but we didn't really do anything musically. And me and Ad used to live together. We had our, it was our first, the first time we moved there at our parents' ages. We had to be about 18 years old, something like that. And we was renting this house and we, we had this party. Our neighbours used to hate us. We used to play guitars all the time, music. You know, no, it wasn't even that loud, really, to be fair. Not compared to our neighbour playing now, anyway. <laughs> uh, so how many, yeah. how many is in the band now, then? Uh, um, there's there's five of us. There's right. five of us. So on the first boat, there used to be four of us. So there was me, Ad and B. I used to play the bass instead of the guitar. Because we, we didn't have a bass player, so we was just whatever, I'll play the bass. So it was a four-piece. And we had a drummer who started out with us in the new venture. His name was Sam. And he was brilliant. He was amazing. He was a great drummer. I've got a lot of time for him. We still, we still speak to him quite a lot. Uh, but we, we, we lost him when we started back up. He couldn't put the commitment in. He was, you know, working long hours and whatnot. And he just, his heart wasn't in it anymore. Um, so that's, we first met James, though. So before before Tom the drummer came, we met James and James, I went to work with James. Um, he came from another band called Tiger Punch and they were a little bit like Rage Against the Machine and they would just take their t-shirts off at of gigs. It was weird, <laughs> but some proper rock and roll and we're all there, we've got tattoos everywhere. It's kind of cool to be fair. Um, but James went and played the bass for us a couple of times and it, it just sparked something back off. I started playing guitar, so I've not played guitar in City Lights ever. So I'm like, oh, this is amazing. This is my main instrument. I get to do what? I love doing. Uh, and James is a brilliant bass player. He's really good. And Tom, the drummer, he was also from Tiger Punch. So when Sam left, James brought Tom in. Um, and we did play one gig of a session drummer. But long story short, we fell out with him. It didn't, didn't work out very well. Um, it was a good gig, though. Um, we, it was in the Academy 2 support, a band called Alabama Free. Right. Uh, they did the, I think it's the Sopranos. You know the Sopranos? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I they, did yeah. the, they did the theme tune to that. Oh, did they? Yeah, yeah. Did, yeah, yeah. So there was a good, it was quite a big show. Uh, but yeah, we had a session drummer and then we, we, we sacked him and Tom came in full time. And that, that's what become what we now call right. City Lights. Right. This is, so all that is sort of priest of this is where we start. Yeah, 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 sure. And so yeah. to get anything into perspective, obviously you've got the band, but on the social side and on the kind of the marketing side, Am I right in saying that you're the main person that yeah, controls yeah, all run, of that? Yeah, I run the majority of the social media. Um, okay. We take we, we we all have a little double of Instagram, but uh, uh, you know, mainly me. It's mainly me, and and not through anything other than I was good at it. The other guys, I mean, some of them are, are technophobes. Some of them don't even have proper smartphones. <laughs> you, you'd never really? think it. Um, you know, and I've always been. You know, I enjoy it. That's the main thing. I enjoy being on social media. And I think that's half the battle about getting, yeah. you know, the other guys think, oh, it's a bit of a chore. I've got to get yeah. on and post something. Whereas I'm kind of like, yeah, let's get on. Who's doing what? You've got to enjoy it, haven't you? Yeah, I, yeah. I think so. And I think so. So I did just sort of become my thing. Um, so yeah, I do, do the majority of the, the, the work. Sure. Say. 
So, okay, the podcast is obviously about merchandise, and the reason yeah. why I've got you on is because yeah. I think out of the artists and the bands that I'm engaged with and I interact with on a daily basis, I think you guys have got it just right. The way you do it, the way you market it is, I think is brilliant. So maybe you can just um, explain to the actual audience exactly how you started doing that and how you've kind of morphed into being this like powerhouse of marketing your you know yeah. your t-shirts and your and your records etc sure it took us by surprise a little bit because we we never had plans to do much merch when we did the, the first ep it was, it was just a digital release we had no intention of releasing a physical cd and a vinyl was not even a, a thought in our mind um we, we had a little dabble in t-shirts and we did a, a little run of yellow t-shirts which sold out pretty fast um, I mean, let, let's take it back for merchandise mm, for me. Please. A few things that are important, and, and this, this is what I'd advise any bands to do when you're looking into doing merch, is are you even ready to be releasing merchandise? And when I say are you ready, before we even release a T-shirt, we were in a top studio recording top quality singles with great artwork. You know, th- these things are the first and foremost. Have you got sure. a great song or have you got a great EP or a great album? Have you got... You're a musician first and foremost, you're not a t-shirt, so we're not Nike, we're, you know, with the City Lights, we make music. <laughs> you know, so you've got, to nail, you've got to nail that part, you've got to be, you know, you've got to get the music right. And, um, and our first EP was our first venture into that. Okay. So we had, we had this great music, um, you know, we went to a great studio, we went to Abbey Road, so we had, we had this great story, you know, we're, we're an unsigned band, we've got no funding, no management, we're, we're going to where the Beatles go, went to record and, you know, where everybody after them went. So, you know, it had a little bit of a, a story you know that's something to latch on to sure. but then we had great artwork we've got a guy called matt crockford and we always say he's a sixth member of the band <laughs> any photograph you see of us he he, he most likely took it you know 90 percent chance he took it all the artwork he did he did both eps um he's been to every studio session with us every gig he's coming again when we go again and and he does the artwork so you know what we did we was clever when we did rock and road one so it was a four track ep and the first thing we, we come back with is, as you can see behind us there, this yellow thing. Mm. So yeah. this, this, this picture. And, and what we tried to do was capture, so, so that was an actual photo of us walking across the Abbey Roads, crossing. Sure. Uh, yeah, I've seen that in the video. Got, he, yeah. he turned it into a bit of a drawing. And, and, and the concept behind it was, this, so this clapperboard was, was the actual clapperboard we sort of used for the session because we filmed it. So they brought this little board thing. And I think it was Matt that came up with the idea about turning the, the clapperboard into the crossing. And so straight away, visually, you've got yeah. this. It looks great. I mean, it's a stunning colour. It stands out on any shelf. You know, when you walk into HMV, you can see this at the back of the store. Um, it, it's got the story behind it. You know, you've got the whole the, the Abbey Roads vibe. But, you know, this logo, we, you know, we keep using it. And whenever people see it, they know it's us. Um, you know, and it's, it's just about printing a really quality product. So I did this vinyl. Um, we went to, I can't remember what the company is, Grand Vinyl or something. Okay. They, they pulled it out. But, so, you know, you've got this great front cover. And then that wow. was the artwork to our second single. Okay. So each single had its own piece of art. So all of a sudden we, we've maximized our profit rather than releasing that and that's yeah. all we've got. Now we've got red and yellow. You know, we've got two T-shirts to sell. We've got two different colours. Sure. If and, I could just... And, sorry yeah. to interrupt you, mate. Can I just go okay. back? Because um, this is great, and we'll, we'll get to this yeah. uh, in a little bit more detail. But I just want to get to the point, because obviously most artists now think that selling uh, vinyl is a complete and total waste of time. People aren't interested. And I just want to try and get um, an idea of actually how you got the idea to do it, because mostly now, most artists and most musicians um, are looking at streaming revenue. Um, yeah, to make to make so, their money, where where in that in that journey did you make that transition to sure, go, oh let me start selling vinyl? Well, you know, we we did it on we did it on a whim. So I mean, I'll go back because this is a, an important piece. Yeah, well, please, valuable to us. Yeah. So we were talking about doing a CD. First, it was a CD run. So HMV this live local thing, and they were asking bands, local bands, to to release a CD. Right. And it was you, you only went into your local store. And I took advantage of their system. So I got into HMV, loads of different HMVs on Twitter. And I was just like, can we go in your store? Can we go in your store? <laughs> they didn't even know. They didn't even know their own rules properly. So they'd already told us yes. Like, <laughs> but London had told us yes. Um, Telford, Manchester, a few of them had told us yes already. And then by the time it went to, to the, the HMV, the managing director guy, he emailed me and said, Luke, we can't do it. You know, we, we can't put you in the stores. So I won't listen. 
I said, it's up to you guys. Well, you've already told us yes. We've already told our fans yes. Now, if we can tell them no, but we're telling them you told us no. So we, we, we sort of put them on the back, back foot a little bit. Um, yeah. But that, that's how we first got into merch. We released the CD because we thought, oh, they, you know, let's get something there. Let's do something yeah, cool. Sure. And we made the loss on it. We knew we were going to make a loss on it. It cost us more, you know, that it... HMV do a profit share, which they do with every band, and it is what it is. Yeah. We knew we were taking a loss on it, but it was all about getting your product into HMV. That's like the boy dream for bands like us. You know, Spotify didn't exist back then. It was all about getting that CD on the shelf next to the, the other cool bands. The vinyl come about. So I start. I had a, a vinyl player for my 30th birthday. Uh, my okay. 31 there, so it wasn't too long ago. <laughs> started collecting vinyl. Started, it's just cool. It's like a big piece of awesome artwork you know it's a reasonable price you're supporting the bands it comes with all this cool stuff and i kept saying to the lads we should do vinyl and we built this little community where everybody's just like i could see them all they're all everyone's listening to vinyl everyone's listening to vinyl so i said to the lads, let's do a vinyl run so we scoped it out i think it cost about a grand and a half to get 300 vinyls out okay um you know so that's money we would have, we would have had to foot up front and we were talking about it and the lads were just like look you know, we had money in the kitty, but that money was studio money. It was band money. It was, you know, to do to do what we want to do. And I said to the lads, I'm going to try something out. So I spoke to to my artwork guy. I said, listen, mock me up a vinyl. He said, what you, so we, we designed the CD cover. Yeah. And then I said, I want it coloured. So this this is the, the actual colour of the vinyl itself. Sure. Like a nice, big, vivid wow. way. It looked awesome. So it's really strong colours then. Yeah. Yeah. The, you know, next to each other, the contrast. Yeah. Them, which it's amazing. Awesome. Um, so I said, just, just mock me up a picture. So he, he mocked up this picture. And I put it out on Twitter. All I just said was vinyl, question mark, photo. Bam. Posted it out. God, so it, it so the first platform was Twitter then? Yeah, was, Twitter. Was it was, Facebook? No, no, no. We went straight to Twitter. Straight, straight to Twitter, and okay. All we said was this picture, vinyl, question mark. You'll still find the tweet somewhere. And that was it. And then everyone started going crazy. Wow, what do you mean? Vinyl? Yeah, they could see this picture. This thing exists. It didn't exist. We didn't have it yet. So I said to the lads, I'm, I'm just going to test the water with this and it might tank, but if it tanks, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. I said, I'm going to take pre-orders. Okay. And they were like, what? I said, I'm, I'm, ta- I'm, I'm selling this vinyl. Now, they didn't even exist. There was no vinyl. We knew how much it cost. We knew it'd take six weeks and we knew people were interested. Sure. So I just said, right, pre-orders, we're taking them now. And we never had a website at the time. We just had Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, nothing. That's I had crazy. an Excel spreadsheet and a PayPal address. <laughs> and... I was literally saying to people, you know, pay us friends and family so we get most of the cut. I didn't get the cut. Um, Brilliant. So, but what I said to the lads, yeah. and this is what made it unique and what made it, and this really sold us. So, so we said, we're taking pre-orders tomorrow, five o'clock. So that, this caused a bit of a stir, but not enough to make enough money to buy the vinyl yet. You could, sure. you can see the numbers, you know who's going to buy, and you're looking yeah, and you're yeah. thinking, this is risky. I mean, we've got no cash to put to this. So we're the- relying the way you're looking at it then is obviously to set up the pre-orders, get, get the, the money, money come, get the money in, which will then yeah. help you pay for the actual the, the product, the, sell the product, it. Exactly. Then, yeah. yeah. Okay. So we put nothing in. So we're sitting there, we're ready to go live five o'clock, four o'clock. I posted and I said, everybody that pre-orders a copy of this vinyl, the first 100 people, I said, I think something along the lines gets a free handwritten lyric sheet. Okay. Now, this cost us nothing. It cost us paper, pen, a lot of time and a bit of risk take. Yeah, for sure. You, you know, that was it. All of a sudden, bam, they went on sale five o'clock. I had £3,000 sitting in an account. I didn't wow. just make them final. We're sitting there with a grand and a half worth of profit. That's crazy. You know, within three days, it was managing it all on a spreadsheet. Yeah. You know, it, it was done. And they continued to sell. We ended I mean, up getting... When you think More. about it, how, how, how long does it take to earn that on Spotify, for example, 1,500 quid? Um, we've, we've been going, we've been on Spotify for about two years now with a sing with the big stuff. Yeah. And I think we've made two and a half thousand dollars. Wow. So in three days, you pretty much made some of that or yeah, most of that. They made, made, made all of it. Merch, yeah, 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 yeah. Merch sales. yeah, literally, you know, in three days done and um, literally, literally what happened is as soon as the money was in the account we ordered the vinyls and that went in and then we kept selling them then you know they're still treacle and then some people didn't have the money that day to order one some people waited to pay day i think by the time we released the first batch we, we'd sold a, you know a couple of hundred um we, we didn't expect it to be as big a, i expected to maybe just scrape the money back sure sure 
you know, we didn't expect it to be. The lyric sheets went down a treat, so we, we did 20 each. So how did numbered. you do the lyric sheets then? Was it literally just a case of uh, photocopying the, the lyric sheet? Uh, no, we a- hand, hand wrote every single song start to finish. Hand okay. wrote e- every single lyric. Uh, each sheet had a little bit of a quirk, so the uh, guitarist, he put the chords on his as well. Right. Um, you know, there was all signed, and in the corner, we, we, we numbered them. So mine would be initial LH, number 1 to 20. So somebody had whatever one that I did, number 1 to 20. Somebody had one that the rapper did, somebody had one that the guitarist did. Everybody's got one of these lyrics. It's the same song, just that was... So you wrote it, out every single yeah, one of them? Yeah, every, every single crazy. lyric. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it took a while. I mean, we, we got to the point, I think some of us left it to the last minute and had to <laughs> bang out 20. And it was a nightmare. It was like writing lines <laughs> Whereas so, our bass player, James, he was sensible. He did like three a day or something, so it wasn't that bad. So at that point then, you still haven't got a website. You're literally just no, selling this yeah, via social media. Yeah, yeah. Literally just, just flogging it out, pay us by PayPal or pay us by bank. Some people were paying cash as well, like you know, local people and friends and family who wanted a copy. So you're basically collecting the uh, emails from PayPal and then yeah. just emailing them or asking for yeah. their, their address so you could then yeah, ship yeah. it out to them? Yeah, yeah. Lit- literally that, literally, yeah. Yeah, on the paper, they were adding their address on and, and whatever details. Then we just collected this big email list. Then we, crazy. The, the, the day the vinyls come, we sent a massive email out to say, "Bam, it's here. Here's some pictures." And it was quite personable, to be fair, to say, "Look, this is yours. Here's the lyric sheets. They're going. We're boxing them. Check this out. There's photos all of social media." The first one we ever did, all five of us came to the, the same house. I think it's my house, and we, we just signed every single vinyl. Bam, that's every crazy. single one we, just, we signed. And that's another thing as well. I say to bands, sign your merch. Sign it. Oh, and, and buy, we bought these metallic Sharpies rather than okay. standard. Because it just looks cool. It's just, it's yeah. glittery gold. It's awesome. You know, everything it's more personal, the, isn't it? Yeah, in the detail. It's all, all in the detail. I wanted the lyric sheets, to be fair. It never worked out, but I wanted to print off the logos on the bottom and stuff to make them cooler, but it never worked. The cardboard was too thick and we had some printer issues and whatnot. So we just had right. But it, it was a really personal, pro- personal product. Everybody loved it. It was, it was a great EP. It had a story. And we thought, well, that was that. That was the end of that. But it just kept selling. It kept selling. It kept making money. It makes us our vinyl now. It still makes us more money than any of our other merchandise. Really? Um, t-shirts have got a great market. I mean, because keep in mind, we paid four pound fifty for one one vinyl. Yeah, because I'm just looking at your website now, and you don't have that many products. To be fair, um, no. you literally got um, what three sorts of colours of t-shirts? Yeah, and then the two vinyl um records yeah we did have cd and a couple of other t-shirts on there but they sold out so we took them off sure so most yeah, of your most of your sales then is coming from literally those vinyl. five products vinyl vinyl mainly yeah vinyl. mainly uh, vinyl all right um, so you don't sell as many t-shirts but we do um, the t-shirts always sell out but we get a much smaller run so we usually get a run of 50 and we'll sell out 50 yeah um, and you, you'll double your money on it and um you know it's all right but a vinyl four pound fifty for one vinyl Sure. Um, we're selling them twenty pound, twenty five pound a pop. So the markup is amazing, then. Yeah, very, yeah. very, very good. It's costing next to nothing to ship. And the first time we learned a lot of lessons. The first time we, we shipped everything first class, tracked, <laughs> and it was we, we had like these plastic coating sheets that went over the vinyls, and we spent a lot we of money. So that, yeah. Yeah, so our profit margin was a lot smaller. But this time round, I said to the lads, I "said second class just gets there a day later." <laughs> They, they wait six weeks for it anyway. You know, it's not like they're in a rush. And, and the plastic sheet, you know, I was like, it doesn't even do anything. No, no, exactly. So we, we cut it out and we, we, we minimised it a bit. I think we put the vinyl up itself a couple of pounds just to cover some of our costs. But so the second one, so I'll talk about the second one. So we said we didn't want to do lyric sheets again because it was a pain in the backside. It was long. By so this time, did, did you have a website by this point now then? Yeah, or so are you still did, literally just on yeah, social? No, at this, so at this point, we've got a website. So right. all we do, we've got onto Wix. Yeah. Um, we pay £20 a month. So keep in mind, one vinyl sale a month funds our whole website. Pays that, yeah. Exactly. Pays for the website. Yeah. Um, and we get so much traffic for our website now. We've got our lyrics on there, videos, releases, stuff. We need to do some more work on it. We've recently done a little bit, but we need to do some more. Sure. Well, this is so really got- interesting. I had a, sorry to interrupt you. I had a conversation no, but- this morning with someone, I won't name them, and they were suggesting that they didn't get that much traffic to their website. Um, they put a link on there for the email and, and nobody used it, but... 
I was trying to explain to them that you need to um, encourage people to actually go to your website. You can't just... Give them a reason to go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it, it seems like it's working perfectly for you guys. A big one for us, our main driver for traffic to our website. Well, one, when people want to go buy something, but two, um, lyrics. People keep asking us, where, where are your lyrics? What's the lyrics? What's the lyrics? And we tried to get our, our lyrics on like all the big lyric websites and stuff so people could find them. And you have to be big and quite well known for that to happen and jump sure. through hoops and get all this approval. And we couldn't get it. And then all of a sudden we put one song on the website and said, these lyrics are on the website. Bang. Everyone's like, boom, straight over wow. there. Cool. They've got the lyrics. They know what they are. Because people want to know because, you know, the, the words are quite fast. and Sure. So they want to they wanna see the lyrics. They want to yeah. sing along basically to your track. That's yeah, the reason why exactly. they want them. Yeah, exactly. That. Yeah, learn the words, you know, ah. just, just that sort of thing. So it just drives. So what we started doing is having a song on every couple of weeks or once a month. And we try and coordinate that when we're about to push sales for vinyl. So get some lyrics, get some traffic vinyls on there. It's there, you know, buy it. Um, and that it works really well. Um, you know, the website's not just about, about, you know, selling products. You don't know how difficult it is to manage a, a spreadsheet. Yeah, I bet. I, I sent people two copies and, and they, they everyone's polite and kind of, and say, we'll send it you back. And we just go, don't flipping worry about it. I've got, <laughs> got stacked. The amount of times we've sent somebody two copies of something or accidentally sent both copies instead of one. And they could, they always come back and say, oh, what do you want me to do with this? And we're just like, yeah, just, just, just keep it. it yeah. <laughs> that, our mistake, it is what it is. It happens. You've just got to accept that. Um, so going back so to your, your website then, um, sorry yeah. to interrupt you. The, so you've got a Wix website now, yeah? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. you don't obviously sell via PayPal anymore. It is literally you've set no, up like a Wix store. Oh, you do, yeah. So you've yeah, got a Wix got store. A Wix you... store, but it, it accepts backs, it accepts Visa, it accepts PayPal, sure. literally any anything. You know, and they're quite established. They don't take a cut. They just take their twenty pound a month, which again is one vinyl for us a month. Um, and I think PayPal take a you know a small cut. I think I think on a twenty pound sale, PayPal take about eighty four pence off us. Okay. Um, but what we did to accommodate that was just put the vinyl up a pound. Makes sense. You, you know, we're, we're quite, I mean, some people say it's quite highly priced, but I say, look, it's a great product. You say you highly know, priced, well, they might say it's highly priced, but if people are purchasing it, then yeah, but the customers you know, obviously, they like what you're doing, they like your music, and they're yeah, prepared to exactly. pay for it. Well, this is what I say to bands, because people say, yeah, but, you know, Liam Gallagher's vinyl is the same price as yours. And I say, well, yeah, but to our fans, we're Liam Gallagher. Yeah. You know, we're, so, so why not? You know, I think bands underprice themselves massively. Sure. Um, especially with t-shirts and see, they practically give them away. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, you've got to, you've got to, you're a business at the end of the day. You've, you've got to make money to get back in the studio to be able to release more products and stuff. So, you know, I think that they're priced quite well. We're quite happy with where they're priced. And so the second one, we said to everybody, we didn't want to do lyric sheets, too much hard work. What can we do next? So I said, again, everybody that pre-orders a copy of the vinyl gets the name on the back of the artwork. Wow. And that's okay. it. So every single one of those people were the first people to pre-order a copy. I have no idea how many names are on there. That's phenomenal. Um, so you basically just t took that list, asked the printers to print it on there, goes yeah, out to the that customer. Was it. Yeah, Brilliant. well, Matt, Matt designed it in the artwork. Um, yeah. and, and that was it. Flew it out. You know, so straight away, again, we had no money. We never put the money forward. We just said, vinyl again, here's the cover. It's going to be orange and cool. So again, we, you know, it's about getting, again, you know, good quality product, I say, is, is, is the first and foremost. You know, it's got that yeah. cool look about it. It looks like a great product. Um, everybody had the name on the back. And people st still talk about it now. Every time we mention vinyl, they go, yeah, I've got my name on the back of one. You know, everyone's, <laughs> and I think it's awesome. Sure. You know, it's, I, I can't remember who came up with the idea, whether it was me or one of the other lads or what, but, you know, people just run with it. It's all about doing these little quirky things that cost you nothing. They cost you absolutely nothing. It makes people a part of the product and they, they want to be involved in it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we're not fronting our own money. Like I say to bands, this is what I'd advise to do because this is how you know you're going to be able to sell the merch. If you buy the merch first without knowing if there's an audience who want to purchase it, you just stuck with a load of t-shirts. You know, our bass player did that for his old band and he's got like 500 t-shirts in his loft. In fact, the packaging he bought to ship their t-shirts, we now use to ship ours. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, that's how it works. So I'd feel the fans out first, thinking about releasing this t-shirt, who wants to pre-order one? Sure. In, so Pretty straight away, if it, if it gets 50 comments, not 
all 50 of them will buy it because sometimes people just jump on the hype. But I guarantee you at least half of them will buy it. So now you know you could sell 25 T-shirts. Then you think, well, a T-shirt's costing me three quid. I can sell them 20, 25 pound a pop. These people want them. It costs me 200 pound for the run. You, you know you're going to make a profit already. You, you, it's worth doing. Yeah. Get the pre-orders in, get the cash, pay the guy, get the T-shirts. Fans don't mind waiting. They're used to waiting. You know, we're unsigned. It's pre-orders. It's... It's, some people get confused. We had a, a ratty fan the other day, to be fair. Um, they pre-ordered a yellow T-shirt and a vinyl. Now, we've got the vinyl in stock, but we've got, they've not got a yellow T-shirt. It comes next week. So we haven't sent it yet, but for some reason, I'd sent him a confirmation of shipping. Right, okay. So I, and it's something I do manually. So no, normally when I pack a box, because I do all the packing myself as well, I pack the box and I go, right, bang, it's shipped. And I must have accidentally clicked this guy, so he thinks there's a product on the way. And this was like uh, the 17th of September. And I didn't know I didn't. And he'd sent me an email, and he was quite arsy about it at first. I said, look, mate, look, this is the situation. T-shirts haven't come in. And he was being an arse about it. And he was like, well, if you don't do this, I'm going to ask PayPal for a refund. I went, bam, there's your fucking refund. <laughs> Piss off. I don't need you 40 quid. I'm not skin. You know, we did say pre-orders. The post says pre-orders. The website says pre-orders. Um, oh. You know, so you, you do get some, and it, it's yeah. very few and far between. Yeah. You know, we don't get it very often, and um, we've had some lost in the post, um, which happens. Um, but again, so the risk we took was we don't send them tracks because it costs quite a bit more. But we've had like a ninety-nine percent success rate in sending them, and the time we haven't, it only cost us three pound to send another one. Sure. So um, what you're saying is you prefer to send like an either an EP or an album rather than individual tracks. Hey, yeah. Because obviously people want to, um, the, the, the amount they're actually spending on the actual EP or album obviously covers most of that. But if they, if you sent a, a track, it's going to be very hard to actually yeah, price it at £21, for yeah, example. Yeah, the markup's not there. Yeah. I, I mean, some people do release single vinyls, but I, I don't know, we're thinking about it. We're thinking about doing it for the next single. I, I mean, for the next single, we've realised we do quite a lot of vinyl and the vinyl charts is quite... Um, not easy to get into, but it's one of the, the easier charts to get into. A lot of unsigned bands have been getting vinyl singles into the charts and vinyl EPs into the sure. charts. We never registered either of our EPs into the charts. We think if we did, we might have scraped something at the low end. So I think next time we're going to try and do something like that. Sure. So we become registered for the chart, do something cool with the pre-orders, we get the fans involved, see so we can yeah. build up some momentum. Um, but yeah, we're, we're looking into it. But, you know, it's just all about being personal with the fans. I was, gonna, fans. I was going to talk to you about that actually because obviously it's not about just sticking up a you know a, a graphic on on Twitter and say oh buy it but I I notice and uh, it's something that you guys do really well you personally do really well is you don't speak at your fans you speak to them so you kind of absolutely. join in the conversation I think absolutely. that's what helps you with yourselves am I right yeah for me. You, I mean sometimes we post it saying we've still got stuff available you know just a generic just a keep everybody informed we're a band we sell stuff merch is there mainly for the, the newer fans just in case people come across the oh, I didn't know you did vinyl or or the older fans who wanted to buy one and then forgot about it and they want to go back and buy one but the, the main point of sales not come to our store and buy this it's just about look social media it's in the name it's social mm. people aren't there to buy cds people are there to have a natter with the mates yeah. Exactly. People are there to, to, to have a bitch about the government. People are there to talk about new music. People are there to talk about the football. You, know, you, talk, are, you talk about everything then on your Twitter anything, account. Anything, yeah, yeah, absolutely anything and everything. And, and, and people have criticised us for it, saying, you know, you're a brand, you should be a brand. And I'm like, sod it, we're, whatever. But it's our account, we'll do what we want with it. Yeah. You know, but we'll talk to who we want, however we want. You know, we've, we've had some backlash and we've been involved in some backlash and a bit of controversy and whatnot. But mainly, it's just about getting to know the fans. I could name everybody. Everybody who's bought this vinyl, I know who they all are. That's I've got to find them on Twitter now. I know exactly who they are. Brilliant. You know, they're, they're all great people. They don't just support us. They support a lot of on-site music. Um, it's a great community. They, they've they got, you know, little radio shows and things like the virtual pub crawl. So Indy, Rob and, and Sam and a few of the people who set up this when, when we first went into lockdown and people couldn't go out, it was just like a virtual pub crawl where everybody started listening to the same radio show at the same time. Okay. And, and when, when it caught a lot of momentum, it was trending every week on Twitter. Every week it was trending. It got a lot of momentum. There was a lot of people involved. Straight away they went, right, how can we involve unsigned bands in this? And they started pushing bands before the show, during the show, after the show. You know, there's that many people on there that want to support this new 
up and coming music scene. Sure, um, sure. It, it's unbelievable. So once you get into that community, you know, they're, they're just like me. I like new music. I like old music. You know, they, these are normal people. I speak to them because I enjoy speaking to them, mm -hmm. not because I want to sell them stuff, but they buy stuff as a consequence of that. You know, sure. sure. They, when people are coming to your site and they like you, they like your music, they want to support you. So they, they buy the products. So rather than us telling people to go to our site 24 seven, they come, we've got a lot of engagement. So the posts get a lot of traction mm -hmm. and then people are just naturally going to the site. So you post quite a lot then Luke, don't you? Don't you? I mean, um, yeah, I probably yeah. post on Twitter, maybe 10, 15 times a day. Um, yeah. what's the kind of, um, ratio that, you know, how you post. Um, post as in if we post something out physically so we yeah. post on the timeline you, you're talking three or four times a day okay so not that much so, then really no but replies that's where we make right that's where we so we're constantly interact if you comment us we comment back and when we comment back it's like hey thanks it's hey thanks what's up how you doing yeah. your day going? what's that thing or i saw that thing you posted or what do you think about yeah. bam i'm straight into conversation Sometimes I'll pop on for two minutes, just bang a post there, and all of a sudden I'll pop on an hour later, and I'm like, oh, I'm on for an hour, just catching up, replying to everybody. I mean, but I enjoy doing it. You know, I'm not going on to market. I'm not going on to tell everybody we're awesome. I'm going on just to, hey, fancy yeah. a bit of social time, got a bit of downtime, going to see what everybody's up to, what they're doing here. It works really well. I know this is what – sorry, I've been. I was going to say similar for Instagram as well. So we don't use Instagram so much anymore. Um, and that's not because Instagram is not a great tool because it is. We used to be on the story 24 seven. So we built our Instagram before we built the Twitter. Right. Um, we had two Instagram accounts. One of them had like 15 fans and followers. We built it up and it was really good. A lot of interaction. And all of a sudden algorithms killed the page and it was rubbish. So we'd started a new page and then we put the old page to B's page. So he's got his own. Inst so we've got two funnels of, of marketing so if you follow us actually the rapper's page is bigger than our page is it really yeah he's got a 12 13 14 thousand follow i can't remember exactly how many it is um but we don't utilize it so much anymore because it's a time thing i don't have time to do all of them um, and yeah. we neglected instagram a little because you guys too. got full-time jobs i presume yeah absolutely yeah we've yeah. all got full-time jobs we're all i'm um, in it we've got a fireman we've got a guitar teacher we've got all sorts um, so I, I don't have time to get on all of them. So we really pushed Twitter. But we did Instagram first. It was constantly on the stories. So it's just all about being there, talking to your fans. Sure. You know, that, that, as far as I could say, you're a, a rock star. You're a rock star. Yeah. And they want to speak to a rock star. And when you speak to them, you know, when you have they a love time, it. Yeah, of course they do. We love it as well. You know, that, that's what it's all. You make music for that. that that's, that's, that. I mean, you make music for yourself first and foremost, but... When the fans like you, you, you're doing it for the fans as much as you are yourself. Sure. Um, you know, it's just, it's just about keeping that relationship going, keeping that momentum going. You know, and sometimes it'll die off a bit, and so it'll be quiet. And I said, we'll sit down and be like, oh, what happened? We used to be well cool. Everyone used to love us. And then one random post off one fan, and all of a sudden the hype just kicks back off again. Um, and crazy. another thing about the fans as well is so they started selling our merch for us. Okay, so they what, do you, what do you mean by that? So the yellow t-shirts the first one we sold out i think is we did a run 100 to be fair we flew them out they flew everybody at them um and then we kept trying to tease them back out again because of the success of the sales we thought when they sold before they'll sell again and there was just no interest and then one fan popped up in the dm and said that's what a yellow t-shirt i said look you know look, we've tried to tease the air there's, there's no uptake on it you know it'll cost us money to get one and he was like well how many sales do you need to get a yellow t-shirt I thought about 25 and we'll break even. He went, right, I'll get you 25 sales. And he just went, bam. Really? There was a post out. City Lights, yellow t-shirts, pre-orders. Who wants one? It's all about me. You're having one. You're having one. Bam. He sold 25 t-shirts for us in 24 hours. In the conversation with the yellow t-shirt, someone went, what about the pink ones? Because we've got Swinging Bombs, one of our big singles is pink. Right. And when we teased that out, there was just zero up. So we knew it was going to be a difficult sell, so we never made sure. them. And a couple of people went, well, I'd have a pink T-shirt. Well, I'd have a pink T-shirt. So we popped back up in the DMs and said, I'll sell you them pink ones as well. So we've just done the yellow run, which we've profited off from them. They've not even come yet. They come next week, but we've already done done the profit. And now he's saying, well, let's get the pink ones out. Sure. Um, you know, and he's selling it for us. Even the vinyl, whenever a fan buys a vinyl, as soon as it lands, they go, bam, check this out. Just bought this yeah. at City Lights. You should get one. Straight away, we'll sell another vinyl. We'll sell another vinyl. You know, it... 
A good idea, them. mate. I, just, I don't know if you've actually done this. You probably have known you. But um, it's to get them to take a picture with it and post it on social as well. Have you they they all do it, yeah. yeah. They all do it. That's what I'm saying. They all, they're, they're always getting posts. Every time they listen to it, they're getting posts. Yeah. Well, I, there's, there's not a day goes by where I don't see that. Really? Or, or that in the timeline of somebody else. That's really you know, powerful. But every time we post, say there's vinyl available, we sell. We sell at least five. Um, you know, we, we do some copies, and, and that's why we give a lot away for free. I was just about to ask you that because you are you running a competition at the moment? I see. On... Yeah, yeah we, we did a, a podcast with Listen Up, and to be fair, we we're going to offer the same for you guys. We, we'll send you a couple over, and you can give them away as a competition after off the back of this interview. Sure, um, we oh, like thank we you. like to do that, that because there's an element of we like to give back to people. You know, in general, people have given a lot to us, and the fans have given us a lot to us, and we've made money from it. You know, which which enables us to go to the studio and do things we love doing. So sometimes it's nice to give back and, sure. and build that that support. But we'll send you. I'll send you four copies. Oh, thank over. you. Appreciate it, mate. <laughs> Keep two for yourself. Get them on the shelf. And then oh, thank you. Well, there's only, <laughs> I will. There's, there's a, there's, there was only four copies of this one left, um, right. but we just we just did another small reprint of them because they're, they're just churning out. They're, they're selling. Because I, uh, I see a post here. Um, is it called from is it from listen up from listen, listen up, yeah, up that's music a pod, a podcast we did last week oh right okay so that's got uh, 27 likes 58 retweets as well um seven yeah. comments that's that's awesome yeah we've got a bunch of followers from it as well i think we had about yeah. 30, 30 odd new followers from it you know and that, they're people that are genuinely engaged you now they're coming they're listening to the music and stuff you know it's better just getting them in and you know it did, does quite well we, we did a, the biggest giveaway we did to be fair uh, and, and we didn't do it for a pr reason we did it genuinely because that's the way we felt at the time was when we first went into lockdown and the nhs was doing this this work for everybody and all this stuff we said that if you're a fan and you work for the nhs pick whatever you want from our merch store and we'll give it you wow really? yeah we did yeah we sent i think we sent 78 78 vinyls out in total uh, to to uh, members of the NHS or all fans whose wife was in the NHS. Some people, to be fair, took a little bit of advantage, and you know. But you know, we, we thought you know it's the least we could do in in the situation. We, we felt, I mean, we paid for the shipping and everything, but they never paid a penny. You That's know, we, a it, was all, idea. it was all funded by us. Um, but because we did that, and this this was never the idea. This was just what happened. We got a lot of promo from it. Yeah, in what way? Everybody was well. Everybody sharing. Everybody, you know, comments alone a promotion. When somebody comments on your post, it gets more reach. When somebody yeah. reach, it gets more reach. When somebody likes it, so you know, you, you know, the the goal is when you post something there, you want loads of feedback. You want loads. so because you're posting stuff like that, everyone's a like, great gesture. Thanks. So you've got all the people from the NHS who are saying, "Oh, me, me, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I'm a fan." I'm like, "Yeah, no worries, no worries. We'll get you one." All the fans go, "You guys are amazing." We're going, "No, look, these guys are amazing. We're just giving them free vinyl. That's easy. These guys are on the front." lion you know fighting a virus um but it just picked up and then people who didn't work for the NHS just went i'll have a copy of that lads i'll buy a copy of that our wow. sales went up we, we, i think we sold as many as we gave away that's that's brilliant um, and really you know, honorable of you guys as well to do that really you know what, you, when you're abandoned and you can give something back you should you know you should people spend their hard and money and time especially time on, on promoting you guys and you know, we, we, every gig we do, we give away a select number of tickets. We give a select number. Of, in fact, our fans don't know, but we, we watch our fans. We, we know them. We, we see their lives. We see personally, you know, we're on the timeline. We can see what they're up to. And, and then so, and sometimes we've got big fans who are at every show who, who and I, mean, I won't name them specifically, but there were, there were people that fell out of work. Yeah. Wow. And they, they wanted a copy of the vinyl. And they said, lads, can you keep older one? And we just send them a copy. Keep hold of one. There you go. Pay it. Pay us when you've got it. And you know we've had a fan come back and say, "Oh, I had those two vinyls before." He said, "Don't worry about it." You know, it is. Sometimes you've got to look after the people that are looking because these are they're at every single show. They repost everything we post. Sure. Um, we don't spend a lot of money on marketing. Um, well, we you know we do in terms of a big one for us as well is rather than paying a fiver to, to sponsor a Facebook post, it costs me four pounds to, to send one of these. I've already profited them, so they're worth nothing to me. I've got hundreds of them. We post it saying free vinyl. All you've got to do is retweet our pinned tweet. Brilliant Bam. idea. Brilliant idea. Bit, That's something I don't see many musicians doing, is that yeah. what you just said. Yeah, you know, four pounds. We've not sponsored a post. It's going direct to fans. It's organic. Get a video on the pinned tweet with a link to your music. Bam, bam, bam. Gone. 
you know, we've had videos reach 150,000 views just off people retweeting because uh, they want a free vinyl. You send a, a four pound vinyl, they're four pound for 150 views. You're not going to get that on a sponsored post. No, definitely not. Definitely not. And I'm, I'm not saying there's not a space for that sort of stuff, but you know, using your merch to, to leverage your, your following and engage your fans. Why not? Mm. You know, why not? Totally. Uh, we've got fans now with Stalaska. So we've got a, a batch of fans that said, Oh, we missed out on the handwritten lyric sheets when you did them. Can we get one? We'll pay for them. And we're like, yeah, don't worry about it. We'll write you one. <laughs> you know, it's time. It's just time for us. And I mean, I'm not saying we've got loads of time because we haven't. You know, we're busy, but it costs nothing. And, it, and they're the people that have bought two copies of everything and they just want a piece of paper yeah. that have it. It's yours. You know, there's loads of things bands can do to, to leverage what they've got for nothing. Lyric sheets. I've not seen another band do it since. Every, I haven't every band, either. I haven't either. Every band talked about it. I'm like, are you guys stupid? It costs you <laughs> pen and pen and paper. It's the, the the cheapest piece of marketing I've ever done, and it was so well received. I, I think we'll do it again. I think we'll do it again. We've done. I think you know the next one. We're talking about doing personalised videos and stuff. I was going to ask uh, you actually, what what other sort of merch was you, was you thinking of doing then? Because you sell doing, t-shirts, you sell the vinyl. Have you had any other thoughts of anything else? You sell like mugs yeah, so and... we, yeah, we've looked into stuff. So we were going to do a football at one point, but it, it fell through um, the, the supplier and the, the money and the cost and it didn't work out. We're just about, we're just putting together, it's a lot of hard work, we're putting together a 30-page booklet, like a, a magazine type thing. It's going to have all of our lyrics in there. Uh, we're going to take questions from the fans and post them in there. We, we've got to put all the Abbey Roads pictures in there, the studio pictures. We're going to oh, talk dear. about some of our songs. We're going to just like a really personable two year magazine of everything we've done. We're going to interview each other. Um, we've got two questions that you can point at any one member of the band, and we're just going to ask each other stuff and push each other and, and you know, just, just get this cool piece of work out. So we're, we're looking at doing that. And we've had quite a, a bit of um, uptake for that. Uh, mugs we have looked at mugs that they're, they're worth doing to for me for merch i mean look th- this is how we support ourselves mugs cost two quid to make three quid to make we sell them at a fiver yeah you make a profit but you have to sell a yeah. shitload yeah. i gonna sell one vinyl i've got to sell 50 mugs um we try and keep that low cost high reward um, Makes sense. cds we don't even bother with it. For the second one, we didn't even release a CD. For the first one, we did only for the HMV stuff. People asked us, but it just, mm. it's got to be worth the efforts as well. You've got to get the right merch out. So you prefer but, to do the vinyls because obviously the markup and the profit margin is a lot better on the vinyls than on yeah, the other products. Yeah. You have. Yeah, and and vinyl's got it, it's made a comeback in that, you know, nostalgic people want to own a piece of vinyl where CDs kind of died. Sure. Um, you know, this year and last year, I think vinyl sales took over CD sales for the first time since like 19 whatever, 70 or 80 or whatever, I don't know when it was, but if you research, you know, you know they're taking over. And there's a lot more to it. You know, you could sign it. It's a big piece of art. There's a lot of stuff you can do with it. And, you know, it just works out well. But we're looking at hoodies. Uh, we're looking at hats. We're always looking to see what we can do, but have you, ever, band, uh, sorry, have you ever thought of polling your um, your fans? I know on Twitter there's a poll feature and obviously on Instagram there's a poll feature. Sure, we, we haven't for merch, to be fair. It's probably something we, we, we should look at. I think that'd be a that's really a, good, that's idea. A good idea. Just yeah. to find out what people, what, what people want or what they're looking at. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. You, I'll tell you what... Sorry. Even asking them, to be fair, is not something we thought about. You know, what, what do you want? What do, what do you guys want to buy? Um, what, what do you guys want to use? We've not, not thought of it from that perspective, to be fair. Yeah, that's, that's one of the best things you can do, not just for merch, for anything. Um, well, polling them just to ask them on, you know, what their thoughts on the last EP. Yeah. Um, what yeah. do you think of this artwork? We've got this artwork coming up. Which one do you prefer, A, yeah, B, or C? Did, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, we did that. We did that with the red and yellow. So we were having a massive internal band fight about yellow on the front or red on the front. Right, right. Um, I, I know what your favourite is. <laughs> go on, what do you think? I think it was the yellow one, I'm presuming, yeah? It, it wasn't. It was the red at the time. <laughs> I was pushing red, red on front, and we so we just put them out red, yellow. We yeah. said we're using them both, but right. which one's going to be the front? And it was quite even, to be fair. We yellow won in the end, and I, 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 even the lads said because I think more of us preferred red, and more of the fans preferred yellow. And the lads were like, "Well, should we just go with the red?" I said, "No." The, we said we put it out to the fans. We put it out. They said, "Yellow, it's yellow." 
you know, it is what it is. Sometimes you've got to you follow through with that. Um, sure. And that worked out really well. And we have thought about, to be fair, this, this, this new EP we're putting out. So if I said new EP, we've not even worked on it yet. But we're back in the studio in December, ready to work on a new EP. Um, this time we're going to put it on a 12-inch vinyl, so it'll be a bit bigger. Um, you can fit more songs on it. Mm-hmm. So side A is going to be the new EP. Side B, we were, we were toying with either doing a live version of the new EP. But fans keep asking for all these songs that we never really released to right. vinyl or okay. never really released on singles. So <coughs> we've got me. songs on our Spotify, one called Swings that we released 10 years ago that has become a fan favourite pretty fast. It was a good song back then. It's a great song now. Um, you know, Proof and Tim, which were a little bit on the heavy side that we never really put out commercially. So we're thinking we've got these 10 songs. We could probably fit six of them on there as B-sides. So we're just going to put it out to the fans. What do you want to hear on the new vinyl? What, what, what do you want on the B-side? Just let them pick the, the whole of the B-side. <laughs> When the man is looking directly back at you in the mirror Is that who you think you are? Or do you think you are? Suffering illusions of your own grandeur Feeling like a big steaming pile of manure Like we started from the bottom and we came from the sewer We've been grinding so hard, we feel like we're Jewels Waiting for my dinner, couple kisses off a of Judas When you shoot for the stars, they shoot back in the shooters Dark thoughts get buried with lemons and blueberries When it seems too sketchy to see the bigger picture Play the victims and the victors, but we're never staying down. I'm down every time they get us. Every time they get us. We were thinking about doing something like that just to get um, get that involvement again. Sure. But like you say, it's all you know that that the great piece of advice there, even to, to give to us, is is ask your fans everything, ask the people everything. People yeah. just want to get involved. But you do but, that in your tweets anyway, from what I can see. You do have a you do have a lot of conversation with your fans. Yeah, you know? yeah, to yeah. to agree. To be fair, but I don't think I've ever asked them what merch they want. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever thought about it. To be fair, sometimes I mean we we ask them sometimes what songs they like. It's funny as well because I remember what they said last time and they always change the minds uh, but, but we do a little bit as well um, but you know it, it's just just engage them in any way possible sure any way so possible, you know. out of all the platforms then um I, I think i know the answer to this but obviously you've got you've got twitter you've got facebook you've got instagram even youtube which uh-huh. of the platforms works well for you communication twitter. wise and selling your merchandise twitter uh, i'll tell you why and i'll tell you why i prefer twitter over instagram so instagram you can post a video to your feed and it'll get views twitter you can post a video to your vi- feed that people can share right that's the important thing yeah the whole idea that the whole trigger action is you want people to share this to more people sure you post on instagram it's, it's there it stays there it is what it is that people could post it to the story but you don't get someone posting the story oh i'll post it to my story i'll post it you don't get that twitter you get one retweet leads to 50 retweets mm. With you. It, it grows a lot faster. Yeah. Um, Instagram, there's no conversation. You know, you go into the comments and you you got a little bit of people saying, "Oh, good photo, oh, great." Twitter, people are talking about everything. Yeah, there's there's so much to get involved. With. Sometimes I scroll down the timeline and to somebody who's not even a fan, I don't even know why they're following us or why we're following them. I don't even know who they are. And they say something, I think, well, I'll reply to that, bang. We'll have a conversation. They may become a fan, they may not. That's not the goal. And if they become a fan, great. If they don't. Again, social yeah. media. You know, we're, we're there to be social. We're not there to sell. So um, I think we talked about this previously. And if you're a new band, for example, or you're a new artist and you haven't got the money to obviously buy the merch or buy the vinyls like you guys have done, what sort of thing would you recommend them do? Because obviously I've previously in a, in a podcast, I've talked about going to like a third party. No. So a company that like drop ships. So you basically, um, you list yeah, the, the item yeah. on your website, yeah. um, somebody purchases and the third party looks after all of the posting. I mean, look, it, it depends what the goal is. If the goal is to get a t-shirt because you want fans to wear t-shirts, yeah. cool. Get a t-shirt cool. out then. Get a t-shirt out. T-shirts are cheap. T-shirts are very cheap. We've got a company that does a great quality t-shirt run, 25 t-shirts for less than 150 quid. They're easy to make money on. People buy T-shirts. Yeah. People buy them. Anybody can buy a T-shirt. A vinyl, you need a vinyl player. Yeah. Or you need to be interested in the band to own that piece. T-shirt, anybody will buy it. People wear clothes. That's what happens. You know, get the pre-orders first. We, uh, we haven't got the money. We don't spend our money on the merch. We spend 
your money on the match. Sure. So your your recommendation there is for people to do a pre if they've got a, a decent following. Obviously, you need a decent following first before yeah. you do it. Yeah. But if you have got a decent following, do like a, a pre order first. Yeah. Get the orders so, coming in. Money comes in, yeah. and then from that money, right. you you basically yeah. purchase them. And the it, it's a no brainer for two reasons. Because if you pre order and you don't get the sales, you're not ready to release a t shirt. Sure. You still you still need to build your audience. You need to interact with people. You still you still got that level to do. We've already yeah. done that. Yeah. We already we we released the singles. Those four singles were released on Spotify six months at least before we had a piece of hardware, before we had a piece of merchandise to sell. While the music was out, that's when we were churning. That's when we were earning fans. That's when we were out every day. Bam, bam. Oh. And and you know another thing about Twitter is not just about the fan interaction everybody's on Twitter. You take a punt and reply to anybody. So some of our biggest shows, um, we supported Shotty Horror, who's a quite a big rap artist, mm. and he released an album, and it's awesome. Um, he was playing Birmingham, and we just posted a video of us, bam, playing our song, saying, Gay, get us on that gig. And he replied saying, these guys are awesome. Within That's minutes. brilliant. So, yeah, po- so based on that tweet then, he basically had you guys... Put, put us on the show. Yeah, we, wow. we, we, were main, we ended up main support. Yeah, we had a main support for the show. Their promoter got touched and said, hey, he likes you. Yeah, the fans like you. It caused a stir. Get on. So we did that. Um, there were quite a few festival opportunities and little bits and bobs where we just asked, sure. um, you know, check this out. And they do. Um, in fact, Neil McComrick um, is a massive music critic. Massive. Uh, he's done big good friends of you too. Uh, you know, he, he's massive. I think it's the Telegraph he does. Mm-hmm. So he's the music critic for the Telegraph. And I sent him a tweet just saying, hey, Neil, how about a quick testimonial in 10 words or less? <laughs> that was it. That was all we tweeted. He replied back and he gave us, a, 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 I think it was a 16-word testimonial. And, he, 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 you know, he put, you know, rock and roll. Blah. It was a great piece of, I'll, I'll find it, I'll send it to you, the, 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 what he put. Mm. And then he Thanks. put, that's 10 plus 6. I'll bill you when you're famous. <laughs> that's, all, that's all he said. And that was Brilliant. it. And, and we use that in our PR release. But the whole thing, we use the whole reply. So we don't just include the test, testimonial. We include that bill you bill me when you're famous bit. And people laugh about it. Even the O2 when we sent them that uh, press release, they went, buddy, yeah, he's a, a big guy. How did you get him to, to give you a testimonial? So I just sent him a tweet. <laughs> That was it. I didn't get him to do anything. We just took a took a point, and you know we've, we've replied and had a few conversations with him. You know after that, and things just you know it opens this world. Everybody's on there. Um, yeah. You know, Marco, he's the the vice president of sales in Spotify. Um, he runs the, the sales team. He follows us on there. We've had many a conversations with him, not about music, not about right. playlists, not about getting. A, we've had a, a couple of. You know, we built a relationship about just talking about business and life and things. And he's put a few in, we put a few in. And, and then when we released our single, we, we said, oh, this is our new single. You know, what, what do you think? And he had Lissy said, yeah, I like it. You know, it's about, just about building relationships. All these people are there and they're people. That's one sure. thing people forget. These are all people. I'm with you. Yeah. So um, just going back to the merchandise very quickly. Yeah. The, um, do, you, do you actually recommend... Uh, tweeting about your merchandise every day, once a no, week. No, How yeah, often? Well, do, do you know when we tweet about our merchandise? Every payday. Good idea. Very good. Every idea. payday. Yeah. That's when you want to tweet your merch. Find out when people are getting paid. Last Friday of every month. Last working day of every month. Mm-hmm. Merch Brilliant. available. Yeah, yeah, that, makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, that, that's every, every guarantee you'll see on a payday. We'll get something out saying, "Hey, t-shirts available." Another thing we've learned as well, and you've said, I saw you this in a couple of your tweets. When people are on Twitter, they don't like to go. Twitter don't like you to push people off Twitter. So when you post your website link, your post doesn't get much reach. So we've just posted new merch out link in the bio. Bam. Brilliant. Because you've post got two links to your bio, haven't you? You've got your Spotify link and a, yeah. a link to your website, correct? Yeah, yeah. Also, you'll notice about our bio, we mentioned two bands. Um, the, the reason we do that, I recommend every artist does this. They, you can have a great generic bio if you want. Oh, I'm 29, I'll do music, I live in Peter's, blah, blah, blah. People come on our, our page, or if we follow them, because we think, oh, you know, these guys might like our music. We follow them because they follow Arctic Monkeys. They come on our page, the first thing they see is Arctic Monkeys, and they go, I like Arctic Monkeys. These guys sound like Arctic Monkeys. Yeah. What's this? And then they listen, they go, oh, they kind of do sound like Arctic Monkeys. Bam. <laughs> That's how you get your follower. 
Brilliant. You know, Brilliant. And you see a lot of people do this when people post the fact they're like, you know, here's a new band they sound like. Yeah. And then if you're already a fan of that band, you think, hey, they sound like Oasis. I like Oasis, so I'm going to like these. Already you think you like them before you've heard them. Do you actually, obviously you, you mentioned the Arctic Monkeys, do you actually go on some of their tweets and and reply and stuff have you know have a conversation uh, with them or you don't bother yeah yeah Artie monkeys aren't as active on twitter as some of the people but liam right. gallagher we, we're always pe- people laugh because we we he always replies to us for some reason so we've got about six seven eight replies off liam gallagher we're always posting we post our video on there to be fair one thing we do and we do it on purpose because our music's a little bit niche and we've got a rapper and it's a bit different mm-hmm. a lot of liam gallagher fans are 50 50 some of them love it and some of them absolutely hate it right well, we always post a video on there in which, like, bam, this is the most awesome thing on the planet, and we get a shitload of hate. Now, when I say in marketing, hate spreads faster than It spreads positive. faster, yeah, it does. Of course, right. a ruckus. So straight away, you go, your shit, your shit, your shit, and uh, you've got to take that on the chin straight away. Yeah. And then you post it to the fans just saying, man, what's this about? We fucking just posted this because Liam Gallagher loves it. Probably, we don't know if he loves it, he'll never listen. <laughs> these guys are saying we're shit, and our fans go, no, we're not having that. They're not shit. Bam, these guys are awesome. Then you'll have loads of random people who just have a consequence of seeing the post. They go, oh, I'll have a listen. Actually, I like it. These guys are good. Someone will go, yep, not for me. Yeah, I don't care about you guys. You you just keep commenting negativity. You're just making this post, you know, get exposure. Sure. People who like it or like it. People have said, when you've got something great, you'll split the room. You don't want everybody to think you're good because no. it, you want people to hate you. you yeah, want you people do. To, really dislike you you know look at the best bands in the world oasis they've got split fan you look at guns and roses with the same half the world hating them half the world liked them a lot of big rap artists are the same you know you've, you've got to have this friction yeah create for negative marketing it's you know it's one of the, the most popular forms of marketing and we, we do that sometimes we, we sometimes put stuff up just because we know people are going to comment about it you know we know this is going to cause a bit of a, a stir sure sure and it, you know it, it works well, look, Luke, we're coming up to an hour here yeah. and I really appreciate your time on this. Yeah, we, no, we're going we're to have to do it again because I think there's yeah, a lot more absolutely. things we can talk about, not just merch, mm-hmm. actually, other bits and mm-hmm. bobs of, you know, of, yeah. of how you market your music. Um, where can people find you guys? Obviously, you've mentioned the social media platforms. What's your social handle? What's your website? Let, let people know if, how they can find you. If you said City Lights, all one word with a Z instead of an S, so City Lights don't know why that happened where that happened it just sort of happened and it's stuck it works just search it on anything and you'll find us i mean some of them it's city lights music some of it's just city lights but you search city lights you'll find the page we're top or we're always top you know our, our seo kind of works in our favor you know you, you search us you'll you'll find us and Fantastic. Just, just, just to quickly summarize pre-orders get them out get them out get your fans to buy your merch for you if they're not buying it you're not ready for merch yet build your audience and that that's that's brilliant advice if i'd give any advice that, that, that's what i'd give and if you had to do things differently would you done would you do things differently or just do it exactly uh, the way you've done it no I mean, we, 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 we do stuff because that who we are yeah you know we, we, we tweet what we tweet because that's who we are and that's what we are that's what music's all about and um, some people say play the game you've got to do this and you've got to get on with the, the bbc or whatever it's, it's, yeah you ain't gonna do nothing just enjoy enjoy your music first and foremost forget your merch forget the money enjoy we, we don't do music to make money we've got a job to get a, you want to make money get a job you will make more money than you will ever make from music <laughs> get, a job. get a job and work hard yeah. you'll, you'll make loads of money yeah, um sure. you know enjoy the music enjoy it enjoy being in the studio enjoy that one fan that says you're great enjoy every like you get every share you get just enjoy it you know you, you're there for the ride Brilliant. everything else is just just a consequence of that Luke, I appreciate that you've you no. given some great advice today and I've really enjoyed talking to you today. And you, thank you um, very much. Like I said, um, we'll have to do this again. And, yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously, you've given out the link so people can find you and obviously, if they're interested in anything that you're doing, you're quite an amenable guy. They can just yeah, jump on Twitter. Absolutely, and yeah, just, just ask. And when you do that reverse, do it with everybody else as well. Fantastic. That's Luke, thank you, so mu- thank you so much for this. I really appreciate yeah. that. And obviously, we'll, we'll speak soon. Yeah, thank you. Speak soon. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Cheers, buddy. Waiting for my dinner, couple kisses off of Judas. When you shoot for the stars, they shoot back to the shooters. Dark balls get buried with lemons and blueberries. When the scenes do get cheap, you see the bigger picture. We play the victims and the victors, but we're never staying down. I'm dying every time I get dust. Every time I get dust. Every time I get dust. 
We play the victims and the victims, but we're never staying down. I'm coming every time they kicked us. Every time they kicked us. Every time they kicked us. Now I can't promise that I'll live the good one But I found a deeper meaning, now I fully understood one Love for all my riders, no sympathy for the shook ones If all the wrongs could be right, would I had the whole book done When I look up to the heavens above Wondering if anybody's gonna be there when I come What if I don't reach? I talk real cocky nowadays That my place is already guaranteed Dark fools get buried with them as a food Very for the scenes to sketchy to see the bigger picture we play the victims and the victims, but we're never staying down. I'm dying every time they kick us. Every time they kick us. Every time they kick us. We play the victims and the victims, but we're never staying down. I'm dying every time they kick us. Every time they kick us. Every time they kick us. Every time they kick us, every time they kick us, every time they kick us, we play the victims and the victims, but we never stay down. Counting every time they kick us, every time they kick us, every time they kick us, we play the victims and the victims, but we never stay down. Counting every time they kick us. 